If you have bills and debt piling up, a personal loan through NetCredit can provide funding up to $10,000 to help you get back on track if eligible. Visit netcredit.com today. All NetCredit loans and lines of credit are offered by a member of the NetCredit family of companies or one of our lending partners. Visit netcredit.com slash partners for more information. Here's a 60-second nugget from Walnut Hill Community Church. I said yes to the cancer support group because I found myself on a new journey without a roadmap. Our group leverages faith, prayer, and scripture to find shared strength in God's love, empowering us to carry on with our individual struggles. On Easter Sunday, I was encouraged to join Alpha, a course that helps answer tough questions about faith. Saying yes to that and join the Walnut Hill Online family changed my life. I found a new devotion to reading the Bible, a passion for worship, and faith-filled relationships I treasure. My husband and I said yes to volunteering at Walnut Hills Food Pantry. We love the opportunity to help people and make an impact in our community by meeting a great need. You're invited. Join us this Sunday at our campuses in Bethel, Derby, New Milford, Waterbury, and online. Visit walnuthillcc.org for more information. This is CBS Eye on the World. I'm John Batson with James Holland, the historian, writing most recently of... Normandy, again, but from the point of view of one regiment, the Sherwood Rangers Yeomanry, organized as a National Guard-like unit, but now, because it is a veteran of the North African campaign and is equipped with Sherman tanks, American-built Sherman tanks, it is part of the front line landing on the British Gold Beach, June 6, 1944. And also part of the genius that we're going to get to shore, not by having the landing craft run up on the beach and lower the ramp and flow out. No, we're going to swim to shore with our tanks prepared to float 7,000 yards to the beach and then start firing immediately. James, it always struck me as an unusual idea. And what you evidence in this is that B and C squadron recognized right away that the swell makes it impossible. Did everybody recognize that? All the other tanks who were supposed to swim to shore, did they also run as close as they could? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's not really the, the choice of the tank so much. That's more the decision of the, of the, um, of the naval personnel. I mean, I should just, uh, just say for, your, for, for American listeners that, that a, a squadron, a, a tank squadron in the British Army is the same as a tank company in, a, you know, in an armoured battalion, armoured regiment in, in, in the US Army. So obviously, the, you know, when they're thinking about this, this invasion, you know, what everyone's imagining is it's summer, um, the seas are calm, there's no wind, it's like a mill pond, and it's all going to be fine. So at that point, 7,000 yards in a swimming tank, a, a duplex drive tank. So these are, so what you do is you have, this, you have a Sherman tank, which weighs 30 tonnes. Everything about that suggests that it shouldn't be able to swim. But you have this canvas, this waterproof canvas um, surround, um, and it floats, and it's got a propeller on the drive, rather than, uh, so, which is direct to the propeller rather than the, the, um, rather than the wheels um, that drive the tracks. And it can sort of effectively swim at uh, kind of walking pace to the shore. And, and 7,000 yards, when they're kind of planning it, seems okay. But, of course, as we all know, the weather on D-Day was terrible, and there was a high swell. And, you know, you're, you're moving around in flat bottom boats, and they've got flat sides, and you're, you're, you're advancing in your, your, you know, you're moving to the shore in your landing craft at 90 degrees to the direction of the wind. So those flat sides are effectively acting like a sail in a, in a vessel that doesn't have a keel, and they're going all over the place. And the point about, about what the, the aim was for engineers and sappers to get to the beaches first, clear the obstacles, then the tanks would get there, and they would give fire support for when the infantry then followed immediately afterwards. But what happens at Gold Beach is the naval people decide that actually they're going to put the infantry ahead of the tanks because what they don't want is lots of um, LCTs, landing craft tanks, vessels getting in the way because they're substantially bigger. They're like, you know, whatever they are, um, 50 meters long. And they're substantially bigger than a, than an infantry landing craft, like your Higgins boat. And what they didn't want is the wind to get them, push them sideways and then block the infantry from actually getting to the shore. So 
the LCTs then had to go in this great big circle and follow in behind the infantry instead of ahead of the infantry. And this was just a last minute decision made on the spur of the moment by the naval officers on that particular sector. And then because the infantry were then landing first, that meant that they could then follow with the LCTs much closer to the shore without risk of getting in the way. So then they came short. So B Squadron and C Squadron of the Sherwood Rangers were the two squadrons, companies, in the Sherwood Rangers that were designated to be in these DD tanks, these swimming Sherman tanks. Um, and only B Squadron's tanks actually got to the right place. Because of the winds, the whole invasion on Gold Beach went from one section, from green section to um, jig section. So, but it didn't really matter. Um, it, it's just it turned out a kind of sort of different to how it was originally planned. And I think what's remarkable about that is the, the swiftness with which the whole plan was completely changed on the spot yeah. and enacted, and basically it all worked. Yes, you're right that the conditions tore the plan to shreds. So that's Eisenhower. Yeah. You, planning is critical, but the moment you meet the enemy, you, you tear it up and start over again. One, one personality landing... Uh, part of the uh, Sherwood Rangers Yeomanry, uh, Reverend Leslie Skinner. What yeah. was his mission that day and for the next months? How did he see himself helping? Well, Le Leslie Skinner was a really, really good man. He, he, he was he had just an immense amount of humanity about him. So he wasn't, you know, he's there to provide what we would call in modern parlance kind of pastoral care. Um, but he's not just there to do church service. He's there to be a kind of shoulder to cry on, to be able to listen to people when they're troubled, to provide religious solace if they need it, and just spiritual solace and just solace if they if they need it. But he took it upon himself that it was his role to bury all the dead of the Sherwood Rangers. He didn't want any of the crews to have to do it themselves. He felt they were having a tough enough time without having to be involved with bur burying body parts or rotting corpses or badly mangled bodies. Um, and on D-Day itself, he's, he's, he's not in the first wave. He's, you know, he's in the support vessels that are coming in. He lands on Jig Red, which is a little bit further down from Jig Green, which is uh, where C Squadron land, is where A Squadron land. And immediately he's, he's helping with the wounded and, and just being on hand to do whatever he can. He's an absolutely remarkable man, Leslie Skinner. Unfortunately, he kept a diary of every single day, and they're incredibly vivid. And the wonderful thing about diaries, of course, is they're not written with any kind of hindsight. They're written in the moment, on the day. So you get this sort of incredible immediacy of it, which takes you right there to the moment. Um, and, and his diaries are particularly vivid. Uh, and he also kept a casualty book where he made a note of who'd been wounded, who was missing, who had been killed, where those who were killed were buried with references and stuff so they could be dug up later and kind of reinterred in a, in a proper formal cemetery. Um, and, and what a record it is and, and what an amazing man he was. The commander moving with the Sherwood Rangers Yeomanry is Lieutenant Colonel Darcy Anderson, who's... Badly wounded right away. Is he? Is he KIA that day? No, he's not. He's he's WIA. Oh, WIA. Um, yeah, but literally just getting off the beaches. Right. You know, he right. he's just a bit too casual. He gets hit because Christofferson is now the ranking on the beach. There's a deputy commander coming in. He takes command, and they get off the beaches. Uh, miraculously, and as you write, James, it's amazing how many people got ashore, given how everything went wrong and how quickly they got up on uh, uh, on their position. And Christofferson rallies the Sabre squadrons, A, B, and C, 19 Sherman tanks each, uh, and they're going to immediately press on their advantage. This is the 6th of June. I have 6 and 7. They reach point one oh three. So let's introduce that with just a minute. Why is point one oh three important for them to reach, James? Well, they get to so, so um, Chris Robinson temporarily takes command um, just just for for a, a short while on D Day, and then the second in command, a chap called Mike Laycock, he's actually the first person to win a um, win a, a medal in the in the war at Alam Halfer on that first cavalry charge, that, uh, that first tank uh, engagement that I, I mentioned. <laughs> back in the late 19, uh, late August 1942, um, he takes he takes over command from Darcy Anderson, and they capture um, they help capture um, Bayeux, the, the you know probably the second city in Normandy, um, and 
on the 7th of June, early on the 7th of June, and then they're told as an as a brigade, that's 8th Armoured Brigade, which has three um, like um, uh, tank regiments like, uh, like the Sherwood Rangers, to press on down as quickly as they possibly can and try and push on um, and expand the bridgehead. They know that the 12th SS are coming up. They also know that the Panzer Lair is coming up. And their idea is to try and get to this high ground. So the Canadians are fighting with the 12th SS on their left flank. And the idea is to go bypass this flank and just get onto this high ground. Because, of course, he who has the high ground has... Uh, a and, that's, and that's point 103 when we come back. The battle for it with the best the Germans throw into stop the invasion. James Holland, Brothers in Arms. I'm John Bash. Here's a 60-second nugget from Walnut Hill Community Church. I said yes to the cancer support group because I found myself on a new journey without a roadmap. Our group leverages faith, prayer, and scripture to find shared strength in God's love, empowering us to carry on with our individual struggles. On Easter Sunday, I was encouraged to join Alpha, a course that helps answer tough questions about faith. Saying yes to that and joining the Walnut Hill Online family changed my life. I found a new devotion to reading the Bible, a passion for worship, and faith-filled relationships I treasure. My husband and I said yes to volunteering at Walnut Hills Food Pantry. We love the opportunity to help people and make an impact in our community by meeting a great need. You're invited. Join us this Sunday at our campuses in Bethel, Derby, New Milford, Waterbury, and online. Visit walnuthillcc.org for more information. Here's a 60-second nugget from Walnut Hill Community Church. I said yes to the cancer support group because I found myself on a new journey without a roadmap. Our group leverages faith, prayer, and scripture to find shared strength in God's love, empowering us to carry on with our individual struggles. On Easter Sunday, I was encouraged to join Alpha, a course that helps answer tough questions about faith. Saying yes to that and joining the Walnut Hill Online family changed my life. I found a new devotion to reading the Bible, a passion for worship, and faith-filled relationships I treasure. My husband and I said yes to volunteering at Walnut Hills Food Pantry. We love the opportunity to help people and make an impact in our community by meeting a great need. You're invited. Join us this Sunday at our campuses in Bethel, Derby, New Milford, Waterbury, and online. Visit walnuthillcc.org for more information. With fast funding up to $10,000 available through net credit, our online application process was designed to get the money you need quickly if approved. You can borrow an amount that meets your needs and repay in a way that works for your financial situation. And we report on-time payments to credit bureaus, so you can build credit history as you repay. See what net credit can do for you today. Check your eligibility without affecting your credit score at netcredit.com. All net credit loans and lines of credit are offered by a member of the net credit family of companies or one of our lending partners. Visit netcredit.com slash partners for more information. Just when I finish my to-do list. We need more chips, Mom. Honey, I need a lot of chicken. Something else comes up. That's when I use Instacart to help get everything we need from BJ's Wholesale Club. Delivered right to our door in as fast as one hour. And then finally I can relax. Mom, I think we're out of toilet paper. Time for another BJ's order. Download the Instacart app or visit instacart.com to get $10 off your first order using the code BJ's Wholesale 10. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $35. Additional terms apply.